Ukraine is preparing a new drone disaster for Russia. New surprises await the Russians. Ukraine has caught up with the Russian Federation in the production of kamikaze drones similar to the Shahed-131 and Shahed-136. German Smetanin, General Director of the Ukrainian Defense Industry Joint Stock Company, spoke about this in an interview with Army Inform. We have already signed a number of contracts with private manufacturers. This mainly concerns licensed production. So, in particular, we are talking about the production of drones. Private enterprises cannot provide the required quantity, so we sign a licensing agreement and our enterprises are involved in production, said the leader. According to him, this has already yielded certain results. In particular, in 2024, Ukraine caught up with Russia in the production of kamikaze drones similar to the Shahed-131 and Shahed-136 as well as in the production of other attack drones. What explodes in Russia is all ours, said Alexander Kamishin, Minister of Strategic Industries. And this is a fact. Smetanin emphasized. According to him, work on cooperation with private companies is currently ongoing. In addition, a very large number of private development enterprises and scientists have been involved in the development of new types of weapons. There are developments that are more innovative and suited to tomorrow. We urgently need to increase production, so we are entering into cooperation with these manufacturers and thus ensuring the supply of necessary weapons to the armed forces of Ukraine, added the general director. Russian occupiers are very afraid of the heavy Ukrainian drone bomber, which they themselves nicknamed Baba Yaga. Unlike other drones, Baba Yaga is absolutely insensitive to electronic interference. Large drones are too easy targets even for small arms during the day. That is why the only opportunity to attract heavy drone bombers is at night when they are not visible to the naked eye. It has a loud engine sound, the roar of the propellers is similar to the screech of a chainsaw and makes a depressing impression on the occupiers. Oil and gas sector of Russia faces staffing issues due to mobilization. The Russian oil and gas industry is facing a shortage of labor due to the mobilization of soldiers for the war against Ukraine, reports Bloomberg. Recent reports from the Central Bank of Russia indicate that the labor shortage is currently affecting enterprises in all sectors of the economy. According to the material, the oil and gas sector of Russia lacks about 40,000 employees this year. The industry increased the number of online job postings in the first quarter by 24% compared to the previous year, seeking not only skilled personnel but also low-skilled workers. A representative of a Russian job search service informed the source that the labor shortage has affected even affluent sectors, referring to the oil and gas sector of the Russian Federation. He specified that companies offer high salaries to job seekers, but they compete with the state which attracts people to the military service. People are also lured by high salaries to defense plants of the Russian defense corporation Rostec which raised wages by over 17%. Bloomberg reports that another consequence of Russia's aggression against Ukraine has been the restriction of foreign labor influx. International sanctions have weakened the ruble, boosted inflation and complicated international money transfers, making Russia less attractive for migrants from ex-Soviet countries, the material states. Last year, the official net inflow of foreign migrants to the country amounted to nearly 110,000 individuals, only a quarter of the 2021 level. Immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian oil and gas sector became a target of international sanctions aimed at reducing the Kremlin's revenues. However, the industry continues to operate, providing Russia with funds necessary to send soldiers to the front lines and purchase weaponry for shelling Ukrainian cities. The labor shortages raise questions about whether Russia's oil and gas industry can sustain this performance in the longer term, Bloomberg added. The Kremlin is constantly exploring new opportunities to recruit individuals to send to war against Ukraine. Despite Vladimir Putin's announcement of partial mobilization in September 2022 and his claim that it was supposedly concluded, many media outlets and Ukrainian intelligence report that this process continues covertly. Recently, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that the Russian Federation plans to mobilize an additional 300,000 servicemen by June the 1st.
Germany wants to arm Ukraine with Russian funds. Interest earned from Russian assets frozen by the EU should be spent on weapons for Ukraine, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said. The US and its allies seized around $300 billion in assets belonging to the Russian Central Bank in February 2022 when the Ukraine conflict escalated. The EU has stopped short of confiscating the money outright, proposing instead to direct the interest to Kiev. It is important that we also agree that this money can be used for arms purchases not only in the EU but for purchases worldwide, Scholz told reporters in Riga after a meeting with the governments of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. He endorsed a proposal by EU Foreign Policy Commissioner Josep Borrell about how the money should be allocated. According to Borrell, around 90% of the interest should be spent on weapons for Ukraine through the European Peace Facility Programme, while the rest would be allocated to EU budgets to support Kiev's own military industry. Germany and the three Baltic states want to see weapons production in the EU ramped up, Scholz added. The bloc and the US alike have struggled to meet Ukraine's demands for arms and ammunition. The US and its allies have pledged over $200 billion in military and financial aid to Kiev over the past two years, insisting that the conflict must be a strategic defeat for Moscow, even as they denied being directly involved in the hostilities. Kiev has called on the West to confiscate all frozen Russian assets in order to help fund the conflict. The US and Canada have been supportive, but the EU has remained sceptical. About 70% of all frozen Russian funds are held by Euroclear, the Belgium-based EU Central Securities Depository. These assets generated an estimated 4.4 billion euros in interest income in 2023 alone. The after-tax revenue for the assets could reach as high as 20 billion euros by 2027, according to some estimates. Moscow has denounced the freezing of the assets as theft and threatened a reciprocal response against the assets of EU-based individuals and companies within its jurisdiction.